Hello and welcome back everyone. So I have another Radio Link product today. And if you're familiar with me and my channel, you know I do a lot of Radio Link testing. Uh, Radio Link has always been a great company and they've always treated me excellent and I really enjoy using their products. I, I use their radios quite often. So the latest thing they've sent me to check out, review, and uh, you know, make some videos on is this charger. And it is the CB86+. Plus. Now this charger, um, it can handle up to eight batteries, but it does not charge eight batteries at once. It goes through, you can see the light indicator. I've already charged one battery here. So what it'll do is it'll go through one, two, three, four, and then hop over on the other side, five, six, seven, eight, and then it'll start over again. So this for me is gonna be really good for, when I go out and do a whole weekend full of RC, I have piles of batteries that need charged. As you can see right now, I've got all these going. So I'm able to put this together, plug these in, uh, go do my other things, you know, monitor it, check on, on it, make sure everything's still running with intolerances and, and well. And this is really great. Now, before I go into too much detail on the charger, uh, I just wanted to go over the, the starting fact. So what I'm going to do is, as I'm working around the house today, I'm just going to let this thing run, and we'll see what type of battery pile we get completed. So this is the first one I've gotten completed, and now we've moved on, and I had it. It was a 3S, and you just plug in the balance ports on these, and this is what's neat about it, is you plug the balance ports in, and when you start it, it finds what it needs to find and starts doing its job. So after it completed number one as a 3S, it skipped over to port two, which I have a 2S plugged in. And you can see it's going through and charging it, and you can see it has selected port number two. Now when this is, it's also telling it to complete the charge at 4.2 volts per each cell. And when that reaches its tolerance levels, those will all turn green. Uh, they'll make four beeps, and it'll click over to the next one. Now if you're New to the RC hobby, there's some things you probably need to know before you purchase and start using this charger. Uh, the most important thing you need to know is you cannot plug this directly into the wall. This is not a 110, 120 volt charger. This is a 12 volt DC charger. Now it does have a tolerance level that it can allow, and we'll get to that later. But for purposes, for most of us, 12 volts is what we're going to be using. So I ordered a 12 volt power supply off of Amazon. It was like 20 bucks. Hooked up my wires, and bam, I have 12 volts coming off of all these leads, and I have three sets of separate leads I can hook to. If you guys would like to see me do a video on that or uh, know where I got it from later, just let me know, and I can include that in a later later video. But So you have to have a 12 volt power lead. And you have two choices on this. You can choose it off of power or battery. Meaning, when you have it hooked up to a power supply, you're going to need to choose power because it's getting its power from power supply. If you choose battery, you can take these leads with some alligator clips and hook them directly to the battery of your car. That allowing you to charge in the field off of your car battery at 12 volts. So that's a, this is a good charger if you, like to tra if you want to travel and have something you can plug right into your battery. It's also a good charger if you want to do multiple batteries and just let them cycle through. And it also has a bunch of other features such as battery repair and discharge for storage. But the 12 volt power supply is an important thing to know. If uh, you don't want, if you don't feel comfortable messing with 12 volts and you want something that plugs into the wall, this might not be the easiest thing for you. But if you're comfortable with this setup, and I am, and I know a lot of other people are because... We use these 12 volt power supplies for more than just charging batteries. I mean, you can hook 12 volt uh, LED lights up to them, use it as a lighting power supply, and several other things. Well, they're just pretty handy to have in general. But okay, I'm going to let this thing run and do its thing. It's still ticking right away. And after I've let it run for a good bit of the day, I'll get back there with you and uh, we'll talk about this thing some more and about its performance. So we have returned. And I have put this through a thorough test. I let this run yesterday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. So at 11 hours, let's let it go in the whole time. Uh, charged 15 batteries during that time span. And 15 batteries seems like a lot of batteries, but compared to what I could have charged off it, it is not that many. I ran this at 0 0.80 for my uh, charging amps for the whole beginning of the time that I was charging. 
I let it run that way for about six hours because I wanted to leave it at a really low charge rate just to see how it was going to react. And then for the last five hours, I kicked it up to two point of uh, solid uh, two amps. So that that really uh, sped the process up. And you know, I charged three S's and two S's on it, and I had no problems. It went through, cycled, and just kept going right around and charging. So now we can dive in a little further. You can see our menus here. Let me get a little closer. So I've repositioned, and we're able to see this a lot better. Uh, you can see everything that's going on here. Right now it's reading zero across the board because obviously we don't have any batteries plugged in at the moment. So what you're going to need to do to do anything is your set button. So if you hit set, it'll bring up your menu. Now you can choose on your power supply. Now right now I have it on power because I have it hooked up to a 12 volt power supply. But if I was to press set, it'll start blinking. And I could go to battery. And when you do that, that allows you to plug directly into your car battery and charge it 12 volts from there. But I want power, so I'm going to leave it there. And this, you can control your volume of your beeps. Turn it on, off. And let's navigate again. And this is to set your p low power level to tell this one to shut off when it's not getting sufficient power. And this is your timer. Now, um, I think on the older firmware versions that you had to set this to 99 because it would time out on you. But they've uh, corrected that, I believe, in the updates because you set each when you set this to 24, it will count down for each individual battery. So it'll start counting down at 24 hours at each battery. And it just lets you know how long the timer is going on it. But if that was to reach zero, it would shut the timer off and you would shut your charger off. So keep that in mind if you set that on a lower rate. And you have your charge modes. You got discharge, storage, charge. And I believe that's all we have there. There we go. So... On your charge modes, I'll hit enter there. I'll hit press the set button again. Now you can go through here and you could set your individuals. Let's see. Now I could go through and set each one of these how I want the voltage and current to be. But I'm going to leave it as it is because I like it where it is for now. And then you can come down here and set where you want your voltage to stop at. This is per cell. So if you want to charge to 4.2, which is where I charge at on most everything, there, that's where you would leave that. Now, when I got this, it was set at 0 0.80 amps, which I said is a really low charging rate. Uh, how you want to do your charging rates for most things. So if this 5,200 milliamp battery, you would want to put that at... 5,000, 0.200, or 0.20, and that would be your 5,200. So you could do that. Um, a lot of times, that's how you judge how your batteries are. So if I grabbed this 4,000 milliamp battery, then I would want to set my charge current at 4.0 on my amps, and so on and so forth. But what I have been doing, and what I'm probably going to continue to do, is leave this at 2 amps because I don't want to have to set up individual cells for all these different batteries. And all the batteries I have can charge at two amps just fine. And that's still a decent enough charge time for me. Because what I'm going to use this for is when I've gone out to events, I need to be able to come back and charge almost a duffel bag of batteries sometimes. And I'll be able just to plug these in all the way around and let them grow, go right around and do their thing. So... We've moved through all of that, and we've got that all set where we want. So if you want to get this started, it is as simple as this. Now you can start charging right off the bat if you're okay with that 8.0 and you don't want to do anything. Uh, all these batteries are charged, but I will show you how to put them in. Uh, when you put them in, you were wanting to, on your 2Ss and 3Ss, you're going to want to make sure you're negative wires over here on your 4s you're going to have to put it over here with your but your negative wire is always going to point to the right 
Now, once you have it plugged in, we can just hit start and it's going to find that. And this is set up for all the way to six cells. And I've got two S in there, so you can see where that's at right now. And it will just out automatically start charging. And when it is done, this light, it'll beep four times. And then it's going to move right over to this port and start charging again and work its way on around. And it's going to keep continuing to work its way around until that 24-hour timer runs out. So you can just literally run in and pull the good batteries off, plug the ones you want to charge in and keep going. Well, I am going to actually stop this now. I just wanted to do that for an example. I'll unplug our battery and go back to our set menu. Uh, one of the really neat things that they have done with this is they've included this whip. And with this whip or mini squid, However you want to call it. Let me get some scissors and open this thing up. I still got Velcro stuck to them. I'm another project I was working on. Okay. So you can take this squid and plug it in. And now you can charge six 1S batteries all off of that port. And if this is not your connector of choice... You can make just a little jumper and use your connector of choice. Or you could just splice into these with your connector of choice. But you have that option to charge. So this is going to be really great if you fly like a lot of small quadcopters cause, or the small airplanes. All the 1S airplanes too. Because this will be allow, allow you to charge six of them at one time, which is pretty awesome. And one of the last things I want to cover before we wrap up this video... I know it's a longer one, but how can you explain something like this without taking some time? Because it says, you know, that it is a, a simple to use charger. And in the fact that you can just plug straight into it and then hit that start button, it is pretty simple to use. But there is a lot of complicated features that it can do. Obviously, we can't cover all of those in one video. There we go. Got to back up a little bit. And they have provided an absolutely excellent set of instructions. You've got full color pictures, a very good description of what's going on, a very good description of how to hook up your power supply and how to hook it up to a battery. So you, they've got you covered on how to power the device And because a, a lot of people out there will buy just a, a straight to the wall 110, 120 charger because it's the easiest thing to use for them. But... Um, more on the hobby side of the people that like to mess around with things and and do their own custom stuff. They've probably already got a 12-volt power supply. And this tells you how to hook up your batteries in all kinds of different sequences. As I said, it is very detailed. They, they did a really good job. They tell you the no-nos, the do's, the don'ts. So if you take your time and read this manual, it will answer most of your questions. But as you can see, uh, this also has a battery repair mode. That is another one of the great features about this. So if you have a damaged cell and it's not too damaged, this does have a chance of restoring it for you, which is very, very, very handy. But I think that is going to wrap up our initial video on this CB86+. Plus. Uh, I... I don't know what else we should cover on the beginning here, but if there is more you're wanting to know about this, just leave it in the comments and I will do my best to answer your questions or do another video. I really think this is a pretty daggone decent charger. You can do a lot with it. And I've just really enjoyed trying it out and messing with it. And I have a pile of chargers. I, I mean, I, I, have, I think I, last time I counted, I have somewhere around uh, 150 batteries. And I've got a giant metal battery case. I, I store them in a big wall cabinet because I just, when I go out and fly airplanes, I may go through 20 batteries in a day. Now you can only get three minutes of run time. So you, you, you burn through a lot more of them than you do like crawlers or bashers. And in bashers, you can still get, you know, 15, 20 minutes. But most of your airplanes, you're looking at three to five minutes. Um, that's where a multiple charger like this would really come in handy. Uh, I, I especially see it being handy in the flight for quadcopters and uh, different aircraft, it's probably where this is going to be, I would say, the most used unless you are running a lot of 
I guess it would probably be pretty good for drag cars as well because you're, you're burning out the batteries pretty quick on drag cars, and this would allow you to charge on site right off your battery. But uh, just my opinion of it, I've given it a thorough testing, and I think it's a pretty pretty good solid unit. I would not feel bad spending the money on this. I believe they're right around $130, $140, and that's a pretty comparable price for most decent chargers out there, especially ones that allow you to set up custom features and do uh, around around the clock charging like this this is a really neat thing and the other neat thing about it is you don't have to buy any whips because all it all goes off your balance port so that, that's got you covered really well oh well, thanks for watching everybody uh i'll stop rambling on now i hope you've enjoyed this this is a great looking little charger and i hope you have a great day and i'd like to say thank you to radio link for letting me try your all of your stuff over the years uh i just had a great time testing it, and it's all been really good stuff, and I still use it all. Uh, have a good one, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. There'll be a link for this guy in the description below.